in the real, that is, not to be, we want to know really how many people went, how many tickets were sold, how many cars were produced, how many houses were sold. A house in Toronto, a house in Toronto probably sold in 1964, I can think of one in the annex there, near DuPont and um, one of the places, sold for $30,000. Today it sold for themselves for maybe $2 million. What is the change in price, really? Now it turns out, the guy I know who bought it was a prof. He had maybe a salary of 15000 in 1963, and he bought his house for 30000 so his house was twice as much as his salary. Today, he would make a salary of 150000 say, and his house is worth $2 million. So, you know, the house is worth, or sorry, I should say, data in those days, it was like twice as much. Now it's like, what, almost eight times as much, right, everybody? So prices didn't go up from, as it were, 30,000 to 2 billion, which is like an enormous amount, you know, 20, 30 times or something. In fact, the, the real value of the house went up about eight times, because the value of money went up by a certain, was, went up by a certain amount, by a certain amount. Similarly, um, if we talked about movies, it turns out the greatest selling movie of all time in North America is Gone with the Wind. Because in 1933, they sold $100 million worth of tickets, but a ticket was like 25 cents. So 400 million people went to see Gone with the Wind. Um, the first Snow White in 1933, this is, uh, Gone with the Wind was 1939, Snow White in 1933 was like 25 cents. And they sold, you know, 30 million tickets, but that's 300 million people. Right, everybody? So if you think about it, what's relevant is not, you got to, co you, is how much output changes, how much the real changes. And if I said the United States, imagine, um, I mean, this is as good an example as we get, but I mean, imagine that we had cars, the modern car cost 30, no, that's not good. Something that's exactly the same. Hmm. You know, a ton of steel, a ton of iron. For example, a barrel of oil today costs, say, $100 a barrel. In 1962, it cost $2.50. There's obviously a very significant change in price, but how much of that price was due to the greater expense of oil, and how much was it due to the fall in the value of the American dollar? For example, in 1973, when the price of oil was five dollars a barrel, the U.S. dollar was equal to thirty-five dollars an ounce. In 1980, when a barrel of oil was forty dollars, the U.S. dollar was eight hundred dollars to an ounce of gold. Right. So, was did the price of oil actually go up, or did the money change? So that's what we want to do. You notice we want to figure out how much the price or the value of the money changed, so to speak, the ticket changed, divide the total value by the change in the value of money or the value of the ticket to find out how many people went. This is called creating a price index to get the real change. All right, now, the simple part of this is, now I'm going to ask you next. Supposing I told you that in the last year, Apples went up by 50%. And in the, in the last year, oranges fell in price by 50%. And then I ask you, how does, how did prices change in general? In general, how did prices change? Now, it was easy when you only had one thing, like oil or tickets, right? But now I've got two things. How do I figure it out? I want to know the change in the general prices to figure out what happens in total output. Turns out you can't do it in this instance, because supposing I don't buy apples, then for me, prices fell by 50%, because I only buy oranges. If I buy oranges and only apples, prices went up by 50%. Everybody? So we say the basket of goods, what you buy, determines the overall price index. If I bought 10 apples, it went up by 50%, and two oranges that went down by 50%, I could calculate 
what the general price change was for me. All right? Okay, so this with this preamble, we're going to put together the concept of a price index. A price index is just the way that we figure out how general prices change and use the price index to correct how actual prices change so we can figure out how real change occur. Okay? So what that means is, and this is the key element of the thing, first of all, we get a bunch of data about so many things sold at such and such a price. That gives us nominal expenditure. Then we have to figure out how prices change in general, as opposed to, you know, specifically the output of these things that change. We want to get the output change, not the price change. The way we get the price change is to assume a fixed basket of goods. For example, we compare oranges with oranges apples with apples, or eight apples and two oranges with eight apples and two oranges. And we see how that basket changes. And then however the price changes for that basket, because obviously the output didn't change, the eight oranges and the two, eight apples and two oranges didn't change, we figure out how much prices, prices change, then we take that change and divide the actual purchases of apples and oranges to figure out the real change. Just follow along everybody. I want you to be able to do this you know, when you go to the seminar tomorrow. Okay, we're going to go here. I'm going to give you this information. <clears throat> we'll do this. Okay, now, no. Um, we'll say 19, oh, in 2005, this is the year, in 2010. Then we're going to have two columns. This is the price of the quantities I'm going to discuss in a minute. And this is the quantities actually sold in these years, like this. Two, okay? So, in 2005, this is the price of the quantities sold of, let us say, pizzas. In 2005, a pizza cost five dollars. And the typical student, this is the price index, I'll say for the typical family, okay? this is the typical family in Canada. In a month, I put down here, this is pizzas per month for average family. The average family when the price of pizza was five dollars bought, turns out about 10 pizzas, let us say. And then, um, in 2010, the average family, it wouldn't have to be the same family, but the average family, the price of a pizza is now, say, $7, I'll say $8. And accordingly, it turns out, they bought eight pizzas, right? So, basically, you know, pizzas went up in price, they bought fewer pizzas, okay, fine. On the other hand, they bought um, hamburgers. Hamburgers were eh, maybe about $3 in 2005, and they bought 20 of them. And then in 2010, of course, I'm just making this up. Hamburgers are two dollars, and now they buy thirty of them. All right. This is basic price data, comparing the prices in one year and the quantities bought in one year from the average person, the average family, the average student, whatever. Okay. So now we want to figure out number one: what is nominal expenditure? in 2005. Normal means what was actually spent in 2005. And that is basically, I say prices, the, the i price, the sum of, I'll put that, I don't, can't do this, it's the sum of the i price times the i quantity. That, by that I mean 
the price of pizza times the quantity of pizza plus the price of hamburgers times the quantity of hamburgers plus the price of orange juice times the quantity of orange juice, everybody? It's what was actually spent. In our case, it turns out to be 5 times 10 plus 3 times 20, which is $110. So nominal expenditure in 2005 was that. Nominal expenditure Two thousand and ten is what? First question. This will be on the exam. One mark. It is. Give me the number. One twenty-four. It is simply what was spent. Eight times eight. This should be eight. Oh, these are, sorry. These are not. This is thirty. This is eight. Eight times eight. Sixty-four. Plus. 2 times 30, 60, 124. Now, question to you. What was inflation? Inflation, inflation rate would be the percentage change in prices. And that's really what we're interested in. What is inflation? How much did prices go up? How much did prices go up? How much did prices go up in these two years? Your answer might be, hey, we spent $124 in 2010, and we spent $110 in 2005. Prices went up by, in this case, 14, and as a percent, they went up by 14 over 110, whatever that is, 9%. Everybody? Wrong. Because we're comparing apples and oranges. You'll notice that not only did prices change, but quantities change. No, 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 no. If we're going to figure out how prices went up, we've got to keep quantities constant. Okay? So, price index. Price index. Keep quantities constant. And then compare expansion. Okay, like this. So in other words, if they were buying the same goods in one year and the same goods in another year, then we could say there was a change in price, right? Of a certain amount. Okay, so we have two choices. Because we can do number one. This is called um, uh, the thing in the actual name. This is called the uh, oh um, the base year index. The cons the, the, some, it's got another name called the spares. But the, the consumer price index is an example of this. What that means is use the base quantities, use the quantities in base year. In this case, that is 2005 and compare for both year expenditures and compare. So notice what it is is like this. It is the sum of, now notice carefully, the prices, I'll use like this, the prices in the, uh, it's, it's it, like this. It's the prices in the current year times the quantities in the base year divided by the prices in the base year times the quantities in the current in the base year. Okay? So notice, it's fairly simple um, times 100, I should say, on this times 100, because we express it as a, in a form of 100 to make it easier to see what's going on. So in our case, it's going to be, now notice, the goods that we're interested in, we use these goods in 2005. So we're going to compare like this. This compared to the original year. Something times 10 plus something times 20. On the first year, 
the base here, that's fairly simple. This is the base here, it's the base. So it's 5 times 10 plus 3 times 20. That's the expenditure in the base here, notice? Base goods, everybody? Now what are we going to do for the current? In terms of the current, we use the same amount of goods. 10. plus something times 20. Here we used, in the, in the nominal 2010, we used quantities in that year, but we're not doing that here. We're going to use prices in this year, still $8, but we're not going to change the amount of goods. We're going to use the quantity of goods in the base year. So this is 2, right? So now notice everybody, when we compare these things, the quantities never change. The only thing that changed is prices. And the interesting thing is, by using the base year quantities, we use the base, we say we weight the prices by how people like them, you know, they used a lot of these so many hamburg had so many hamburgers and so many pizzas. We weight the impact of the prices according to what people bought. So in this case, We get, this gives us uh, 80, what we get 120 divided by 110, if I'm correct, let's double check, times 100. So it's 120 divided by 110 anyway, times 100. Somebody, use your calculator, give me a number there. Oh. Not a number I know. Huh? Huh? Eric, what did you get? 109.09. Yeah. Let's call it 109.1. This is the price index. Price index for 2005. Now notice, the price index for, in this way, for 2010, excuse me. What were prices in two, what's the price index for 2005? First of all, it's the base year. Notice it's the base year. So it would be, the numbers on top would be 5 times 10 plus 3 times this times 100. In the base year, the price index is 100. In the base year, the price index is 100. In the year we're interested in, the price index is 109.1. What is the percentage inflation? How much percentage? How much do prices go up as a percent? 9.1. It's simple because we're comparing the base year. It's simple, right? It's simple. That's why we put it to a base year of 100. This gives us a base index, how you can work off it. Okay, now, this says that using the base index for uh, uh, Using the base quantity, we get an increase in prices of 9.1%. Now, the real. What is then the real change in expenditure? Uh, real uh, uh, expenditure is simply equal to the nominal expenditure expenditure for the T year, whatever that T year is, divided by the price index for the T year times 100. Everybody? So in this case, we end up with real expenditure is nominal expenditure in 2010, which is 124, divided by 109.1 times 100. And that gives us the real expenditure. The expenditure corrected for price changes. What is that number? 113.66. So it is 113.7. That'll be fine. Okay, now. Now notice, here, when we looked at this, it looked like prices had gone up by 14 over 110, whatever that number was. Or sorry, it looked like expenditure had gone up uh, in fact, expenditure had gone up about 12 or 13%. Everybody? That's what that looks like. 
It turns out that expenditure didn't go up by 12 or 13 percent, but consumption, I should say. Consumption didn't go up by 12 or 13 percent. Prices went up by 9 percent, and consumption went up by about 3.7 percent. Everybody? We've corrected for the change in prices. And this is what we want to do. For example, this year, did Canadian output go up? Well, if prices went up by 10 percent, and actual output went down by 5 percent, we might end up having nominal expenditure go up by 5%, telling us that output went up, but it didn't. Prices went up, output went down. So we're trying to figure this out. Everybody, that's number one. This is straight ahead mechanics. Make sure you can do the mechanics, though, because this is going to be 10 mark. Now we have another option. You know, another option. We didn't have to use the base quantity. We can use the current measure. If I keep going here. Number two is the current index. This uses, use the current quantity of goods as the basket and compare, compare change in expenditure. And this would be, and this fall we've got another couple of minutes and this is enough for you to be able to do problem sets and read my notes and get on with it. It's a lot more in than that. But I want you to be able to do this. This is what the problem set is all about. This is equal to the sum of, or note, the prices in the current year times the quantities in the current year divided by the prices in the base year times the quantities in the current year. Notice for a price index, the quantities are always the same, numerator denominator. Let's try this out. What does this give us? This gives us uh, $8 spent in the current year times the quantity 8 plus $2 plus $2 times 30. Notice the numerator for this is the same as the normal expenditure. 